We are all of us going to do what we are that too lazy or inept to do the last time around. We're going to find this son of a bitch and beat him down. Hello and welcome to another episode of, I guess still technically, Kill James Bond, a podcast between names. Um, as we attempt to kill Jason Bourne, James Bond's sort of non-union American equivalent. Uh, <laughs> I am Alice Cortor Kelly. Joining me, as ever, are Abigail Thorne and Devon. Hello. And we, we watched The Bourne Supremacy, which I think we can describe, all of us can agree, is certainly a film. Yeah, they should yes. have called it Bourne again. It, <laughs> oh, nice. It, it certainly contains uh, many frames of film. Assembled it's, it's into a narrative that yeah. you would imagine a film would have, right? It's got characters, it's got yep. Yep. scenes. It's got one song. Um, it, yep, yep, they've got one song. Specifically, we'll this one. They've got the drop. No, 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 no. It's, well, that's the credit uh, song, but they've got they've got one bit of ambient original music, uh, which we'll get to. They've got uh, mm-hmm. edits. Too many edits, many would say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My God, do they have cuts? Yeah, they have so many it's, cuts. It, we have so many cuts, but of course. Uh, we remember Jason Bourne, uh, our beloved CIA he, assassin. He certainly doesn't, so it's a good thing we do. <laughs> <laughs> our beloved CIA assassin from the first movie, The Bourne Identity. He has recovered his memory yes. of being a CIA assassin, and he has gone on the run with his girlfriend, Franca Patento, brackets, hello. Um, and they're living in Goa now, in India. Um, mm. And she's kind of like helping him work through his PTSD, because this is made at the point where Hollywood remembered that PTSD existed. Yes. And so Jason Bourne has that, and he gets like bits and pieces of memories of like things that he's done and like murders that he's done. Men will literally flee to Goa, India with a strange woman rather than go to therapy. Absolutely. That is and therapy, baby. One of the one of the things is that he remembers Conklin, his his boss, who was killed at the end of the last movie, uh, driving yes. him driving him to work, which to me is very funny for a CIA assassin. It's quite cute. Uh, it's quite cute. Dropping yeah. him off like ha- have have a good day at work, sweetheart. Uh, and, he, he tells him, <laughs> and, and, and he has this line. He tells Got him. <laughs> He tells him tra- training is over, soldier, or something like that. And I, I wrote down this is a would you kindly ass sentence. Uh, he's clearly like mm-hmm. fucking like psychologically like priming him to do the thing, but he doesn't remember what he did. Um, and so Marie, his girlfriend, like encourages him to journal uh, and and write all of this shit down. And we get this shot of, of Matt She's Damon. Sick of hearing it. Sick yeah, of hearing it. Yeah, yeah. M- Matt, Matt Damon you gotta has stop gotten. Stop posting this, Jason. Just write it down. <laughs> even larger than he was in the Born Identity. So there's this shot Can of him bigger. in in the beach house, uh, sort of with this this journal curled around his like massive arm, and he looks like he doesn't know how to write, and he's like doing this kind of like warrior monk act where he's so tormented by the things that he's done and seen, but he just looks like he's sort of staring vacantly. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, he like only knows that he's like trying to shoot someone with a pen because he doesn't remember how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> but he has, he has nightmares, he has headaches, he has, and so he's, he's journaling about all of this. Uh, meanwhile, in Berlin, uh, we see Pamela Landy, to which, again, I say, hello, stern, older, turtleneck woman. She is blonde and American, so she's just getting in under the under the wire. Pamela Landy, who is a CIA girl boss. Uh, that's no, essentially she is a girl that's her boss, role. Yeah, but that's her, I think her, like, her name in the movie and the credits, they're just like, girl boss. Yeah, girl boss. Um, girl boss. She, she's, she's running an undercover operation to, to buy some files in Berlin. Pierce Brosnan's there, he's going to blow them up with some glasses. There's a lady with a cigar. Exactly. Um, but then, Carl Urban walks into the movie. Baby Billy the Butcher, Carl Urban. Yeah. Tiny baby Carl Urban. Uh, so sweet. <laughs> <Hail Mary. Yeah. laughs> oh. He's like a foundling in this movie. He's like hey. left on the steps of the set, and they raised him as their own. Uh, not oh. knowing that he would one day grow up to star in The Boys. Um, and he's, Lord he's of the playing, Rings. Yeah, he's playing a Russian yeah. in this, which means that he does and do the Russian guy of it. It's, it's not very good. His name is Kirill, but that's not really important. Um, yeah, I don't he's know if it's ever stated, so... Yeah, yeah it's so, so, so what Karl Urban does is he, uh, he plants two bombs 
to blow up the power cables, like two individual little bombs. Uh, and we see him plant Jason Bourne's, well, we don't know it's Jason Bourne, we see him plant a fingerprint on one mm-hmm. of these bombs mm-hmm. uh, to, to frame somebody for doing the bombing. And he fucks shit up. Like, he goes in and he kills the the buyer and the seller and and steals yeah. the files. Like, he has he has a silly easy. little pistol that makes a silly little silenced pistol noise. It goes... Mm-hmm. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Sweet, cute. You've got to imagine, I, listeners, I, that whilst all this is happening, we're like cutting back several times to like, oh, like a room full of CRT monitors and like twenty CIA guys being like, "Do we have this? You lost the confirmed? Could trace the guide? Could go to the court? Do we have another angle?" Like, it's, this is this so is the much is happening. The, the CIA yeah. in this movie yeah. loves talking over each other. That's their way of like running a, a control room is to talk over each other like podcast hosts. Um, and it's I've never r- once talked over someone in my life. It's really fucking you know. annoying, is what it is. Um, also, we'll get. I think this is the point at which the cinematography really starts to show itself. Oh, because Christ. this is the sort of they, they replaced they replaced Doug Lyman, the original the original director, who was not really an action guy, with Paul Greengrass, who was also not really an action guy, but was more pliable. And Paul the way that is, it? he was hit ADHD. on the head really hard. Yeah, the yeah I don't know, mm. man. It it feels like he's sort of read the if you if you don't use a tripod, that makes you an auteur because every yeah. fucking shot is just so wobbly. And the like, camera is hell, like man. a participant in the action, except it's not um, because the script doesn't support that at all. Uh, but yeah, no. The, basically, his only way of conveying urgency is to do several cuts very fast, and it really badly over relies on this, not least because it becomes impossible to see what's fucking happening. It's a lot like the sort of like um the later Craig movies in this respect. But this is like really a step up from them. It's it's it gets it's worse as the to... film goes on as well. Like it's okay. It's hard, yeah. Like a little bit of it is fine. It can be done well. Um, and we've definitely seen it done worse on this podcast, but yeah, it gets pretty bad later it's, on. It's harder to follow than the um uh, the opening chase from Quantum of Solace even. That's what I was thinking of the whole way through, yeah. So, yeah, K- Kirill kills both of these guys, leaves with the files, and then goes to meet his boss, who is a Russian oligarch called Grechkov, and he's, he just meets him in, like, a kind of down-market airport hotel, which is very funny. They introduced this guy. He's like, uh, he became rich by uh, buying oil franchises when they were privatized. He's, like, one of the richest men in Russia. And he's just staying in, like, an OYO. Um, th- yeah, it, it's also so sick because, like, the way they introduce him is they use this thing called um, sort of s- this storytelling technique, right? Where he's watching the news and the news is explaining him. Mm, yeah, I've I think always so. he's this. just stood in a hotel room. He's not even sat down. He's stood up watching the TV where there's a guy on the news explaining what he is. And T- <laughs> time to finally is. find out what it's my so deal good. is from the news. <laughs> it's perfect, man. So oh, that's immersive storytelling. In a Bond film, we would have seen Carl Urban go into like a big mansion through lots of sets of doors, and there would have been like we've had yes. the bad guy like playing a piano, or there would have, he would have had like a fucked up animal or something. And yeah. but in this, he's just like in a hotel room, um, which is like an interesting choice for the, it, it the villain. You can, it, I mean, that's t- like a question of taste whether you like that or not. I just leave it to the to the viewer. Although I will point out that all of the real guys like this, all of the real oligarchs are absolutely some pet tiger having motherfuckers. Mostly yeah. because they love Bond films. Um, anyway, so Gretchkov is like, good job with the thing, I'll take the files, go kill Jason Bourne in, in, in India. Um, which To which he goes to India. Um, My notes here say, Jason Bourne runs like a dipshit. He does. We see him oh, jogging so on the dumb. beach, and he <laughs> so runs. Good. Oh my god! It, Matt Damon has been poorly animated for this film. <laughs> also, completely still, like it's moving on a track, arms and legs like perfect right angles, just swinging back and forth. He's also Wonderful. wearing like a perfect dad fit, which is like a sweat covered, totally not wicking cotton t shirt, uh, black New Balance, and white high socks. So. Yeah, uh, that's he, strange. he he runs and he is dressed not like he's out for a jog to stay fit, but like he's like late for a bus. Like he's he's like running for <laughs> something. <laughs> it looks silly. So this, this so he's dropped off the grid, right? The part of the point of Jason Bourne is that you know, Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. He's like a ghost. He disappears, 
And so Kirill comes to India and finds him by showing one guy a picture of Jason Bourne and being like, hey, have you seen this guy? And the guy immediately shops Jason Bourne. We we then see that Jason is his, his, all of his like old instincts still work because he clocks um Carl Urban immediately. He's just like, okay, that's we have to Carl leave Urban. now. That's Carl Urban. He's hell. holy shit, that's a young Carl Urban. Um Marie thinks he's being crazy, but he's not. Uh and we get a chase, which is again impossible to follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they ramp a tuk tuk over a camel. Yeah, uh, there's a sword yeah. fight. He hits uh-huh. Fakir. The uh-huh. various things of this nature. It's not even. It doesn't even do India the courtesy of doing that. It's just background. Like it, it could be anywhere. Yeah, I was sort of disappointed in all honesty because, like, I I thought as uh, as I was watching this, um, that Kirill was like some sort of treadstone of like Russian treadstone yeah, or some yeah. shit, sort of like inverse thing. Mm. And he he just talks to this guy in Goa. Uh, hands him a picture of Jason Bourne's like, have you seen this guy in English? And I'm like, it would have been no effort to have him speak like the fucking, the local language, like fucking uh, Konkani or some shit. Mm-hmm. And they just chose to not do that. Yeah. And I think it takes away from him as an agent. It, it does also mean that Matt Damon uh, and Jason Bourne clocking him is kind of like white guy detected. That's yeah. basically yeah, he's the, the only other white guy <laughs> yeah. in shot. Got yeah. Yeah. Like a and white call like, urban. That's not yeah. what Go is like. Like, there's a fifty trillion like fucking yoga people who have like come there to find mm. themselves. It's uh, anyway. So I feel like the movie is missing Professor Chimp. It's like yeah. it's a shame that we killed him because this should have yeah. been I Professor, do miss Chimp. Professor Chimp. I miss I'm Mark Strong. Carl Urban, but yeah, yeah, <laughs> Carl Mark Urban's Strong good, but it should it should have been Professor Chimp. Yeah. yeah. So so what happens then is uh, oh, well. he he like Jason switches places with Maria in the car. And then tries to drive them across a bridge, and Marie is fridged. She instantly. is fucking JFK'd by Carl Urban. She's done so. Incredible it's, it's, shot. <laughs> <laughs> she literally, she's she's talking about. Oh, it doesn't always have to be violence, and he's like, yeah, you could choose something does. else, Jason. And then, and boom, it instantly gets domed off. It's, it's like um, that inspector where, like, where the. the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where Madeline's one is like, you have a choice, James. It's fine, and they just immediately get her dinner kicked into her face. By yes, Dave yes. These movies love down. doing this shit. They can't present their the, like action hero with you don't have to do this without immediate violence to prove why he does in fact it's have so, to do this. Because like, I, I wrote this down. I wrote this is exactly the same scene as when Madeline Swan said to Jane Bond, "There's always a choice," yes. and then instantly got her head put through a table by Dave Batista. Yeah. Like just it's oh it's so fucking mm. it's it's actually worse than Madeline Swan I feel because like she Madeline this character Swan lived. Marie yeah and Marie oh, she just got Marie was off. like aware of like all of Jason Bourne's shit because we had the whole previous movie where she found out that he was an assassin. Yeah. She she knows Perfectly well that people are trying to kill him, and she's like, "Oh, you don't, you don't have to do this, actually," and then gets killed. Yeah, sixteen minutes fifty four until they fridged the wife. Oh, yeah, like, right. it sucks. I liked her as a character; she was interesting. She, she was. was the only person who was like normal. Like mm-hmm. she was the only person who had the opportunity to be like fun. Oh, she was. God, she, she really was the, was the only normal person, and this yeah. this movie suffers. For a lack of normal. She was the only counterpoint to Jason Bourne's weird powers, where he's like, yeah. I-, I have a single-minded determination and ability to, like, read every license plate outside a place before I go into it. And she, like, part of the reason why she was good in the first movie is because, as a character, she just kind of disarmed that a bit. Whereas now, we just get that unironic. She was his emotional support girlfriend. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <sighs> putting my emotional support girlfriend on a leash so I can take her into places. Anyway, um, so- uh, and this is of course intercut because during this, girl boss CIA has discovered Jason Bourne's fingerprints. Has like run the fingerprint through a fucking like fingerprint detecting algorithm and been Why like, "Why don't you use the identical? We, <laughs> yeah. we have we have this fingerprint on on fucking file, but I don't have the the." What's really funny is that like to see it or... the the way that I think you want to run a top secret organization bureaucratically is that when anyone searches for it, it shows them 
No, you're not allowed to see this. It does exist, but it's hyper secret. And also, here is the name of the operation. Yeah. So she searches for <laughs> ghost Jason Bourne's fingerprint. And that's what it comes up with is, oh, this is a Treadstone thing. You don't have clearance for it. If you wanted to get clearance, here's who you'd have to ask. Which is like a yeah, very so helpful like, system administrator <laughs> straight thing. Straight away do. goes and asks. You get like a series of scenes where it's just her being like, "I've I've got the bloody Treadstone files. I've read all about this." And there's like Brian Cox or some shit across from her being like, "Yeah, we'll get." There. You don't know what you're getting into. You don't understand the clearance necessary to know about Jason Bourne. <laughs> and it's like it's nothing. It's just a series of scenes. I was scenes. doing black ops in Vietnam while you were still sucking on your mama's tit at Woodstock, Kelly. Why was why was Brian Cox here played by uh, <laughs> by Tim Westwood? You don't have Yo the bloody dog. Yo dog. Yo dog. Yo dog. <laughs> we ran a kill squad. <laughs> so 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 Marie gets killed. The the fucking car goes off off the bridge into the water, and we we managed to do another hit from Casino Royale, which is when we like a woman and we want to give her a sort of dignified but horrifying death, we just let her like drift off into some murky water, and so that's this that's what good. happened. Like that shot, Jason so. tries to like give her mouth to mouth. It doesn't work because she's been shot in the fucking head. And then he just, like, leaves as she, like, floats away. Um, Kirill, our, our, like, our guy, is then like, oh yeah, he's totally dead. I haven't seen a body. Uh, I, I definitely shot a woman, but I am now 100% confident that Devin Jason I, Bourne has Devin been killed by me. I love this moment because, uh, like Carl, like everyone's crowding around the bridge because the car's just gone over. And then Carl Urban is standing there, like with a very long bag over one shoulder that's clearly a rifle. Um, and then he just like turns away from the scene, puts his sunglasses on, and walks away. And we're like, cool, normal. <laughs> mission you know, in his head, <laughs> Not was in his head, Single you know what was playing fucker. was like. Da -da -da -da. No, it was the fucking, it was the fucking uh, sting from Police Story. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So yeah, so he goes back to Moscow. Gretchkov pays yeah. him. He, he leaves this movie for the next fifty yeah. minutes. Yeah, he's clocked he's out. Gretchkov is like, hey, take a take a month off to like fuck around, but also, are you one hundred percent sure that Jason Bourne is dead? And Carol looks him in the fucking face and goes. I am 100% sure that Jason Bourne is dead. This I definitely never have come not back. underestimated him. So then we get a couple of scenes, a good 20 minutes, I would say, of Pam Landy, a CIA girl boss, being what I can kind of only describe as the CIA cop. Yeah. You don't have the clearance. Yeah. Fucking no, the clearance, Yo, dog. dog, back in the I, first I really film, we ran apologize. an illegal black ops operation. <laughs> <laughs> I've got such a weird brain today, boys. I'm really sorry. <laughs> anyway, she she listens. She watches the first movie and listens to our podcast. And yeah. is like, okay, I know who Jason Bourne is. Brian Cox gives her the security clearance. Well, no, Brian Cox doesn't. Brian Cox's boss gives her the clearance, and she interrogates Brian Cox, who says a lot of things like, "You have shoveled shit on four continents." Not sure yeah. why. Yeah. Um, he does the also, Brian Cox thing. He's like, I created Wolverine. Yeah. Um, the, it's also very funny that she's she's like, what is Operation Treadstone? And he goes, I've never heard of it. She goes, I have security clearance. And he immediately goes, it was an illegal kill squad. <laughs> yeah, like, it was an illegal kill squad that we ran. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what's, what's also really funny is that when she pulls Jason Bourne's file, uh, she what he's got in there are like some three by five glossy headshots, yeah. like he's auditioning yeah, like, for shit. Beautiful shots of it. Yeah. <laughs> like one in like, up. There's like one and a quarter profile, and I'm like, why would the CIA need this? I, I I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to bring it up for something that occurs much later on. Yeah, they yeah, yeah. just they come back headshots of this guy. So what he does then, Jason Bourne does, is he gets on a boat. Um, and he gets on a boat to Naples, uh, using his like sort of fisherman code of ethics that he picked up in the first movie, where he can travel undetected by boat. Um, then immediately, you like goes through customs with his Jason Bourne passport and gives the camera a big look, like it's me, Jason Bourne, uh, to try and like see what's going on. And this obviously sets off another of the interminable Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne scenes. It, honestly, it got to the point when uh, ev every time Jason Bourne came into shot, 
one or both of me and Abby would go, Jesus Christ, very <laughs> quietly to ourselves. <laughs> It's always shot like that. Like it's always like, guess who it is? And it's like, yeah, Jason Bourne. I know. I'm watching the yeah, movie. I've seen the first film. We like follow the information back, so it goes to like London, England, CIA substation. Uh, which yeah, if you're yeah, Caleb Moper, like, is like Abby's out. apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I saw this, I was like, London, England, CIA substation, I'm like, yeah, it sure is. Um, <laughs> so this goes all the way back to the CIA headquarters, where the director d- does the thing where he's like, okay, we gotta fucking kill this guy. Yeah, yeah, because the, the reason they're hunting right him, now. the reason Pam was involved in this is like, a few years ago, somebody embezzled about 20 million from the CIA. Um, and um, Pam is like, I think it was Chris Cooper, the villain from the first one. I think he and Bourne were in this together. Um, that's what we were trying to find out with these files. And like Bourne, as far as we know, turned up and like killed everything. Because remember, Meanwhile, Carl Urban framed him. So Brian uh, Cox Pam is sitting Brian there Cox, yeah, sweating, sweating through bullets. his fucking, yeah, <laughs> through like three layers of suit. Yeah, um, he's like, well, we got to kill him right now. We, gotta, we definitely <laughs> got to kill this guy immediately. And then Pam's like, no, I reckon we should bring him in alive. But anyway, Pam and Brian are off to find Jason Bourne, um, yeah, who has been locked friends. up in an airport by by a dipshit. Yes. Just a guy is like, Area hey, what's dipshit. up? How are you doing? I, I feel so bad for this I guy. This I really guy. like this I like it. favorite guy. He gets his, one scene, and I, I like this actor's performance. He's like, his, yeah, I just captured Jason Bourne. He, his, his name is John Nevins. He's like a, a CIA officer in, in Italy. And we see him come and he's kind of harassed, he kind of doesn't understand what he's getting into. Clearly no one has told him about who Jason Bourne is, so he's like on the phone on the way in, like, yeah, no, it's probably nothing, a guy's name just came up, I'm gonna like ask him some questions. Um, mm-hmm. he, he tries to like interrogate Bourne, Bourne no-sales him, like, completely, he doesn't even answer yeah. him, doesn't even look at him. And, and then he gets the phone call from Pamela Landy that's like, Yo, do you know who Jason Bourne is? Do you know how insanely cool Jason Bourne is? He he gets the text that just says it's time to start the killing. <laughs> yeah, uh, she she hypes up Jason Bourne for a bit, and Jason Bourne immediately goes sicko mode on him, uh, knocks him and another cop unconscious. What? Yeah, because like he get he gets the text right, mm. he gets the fucking call, and then like he's like, All right, I understand. He's in the room with Jason Bourne while he's doing yeah. it. It's like he's just on the phone, like, yeah, yeah, all right, and then just pulls a gun immediately the second he gets off the phone. Well, clearly, call. what 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 Pamela Landy is saying to him at this point is, "This guy is the most dangerous cunt you've ever seen in your life." Shoot him yeah, immediately. 100%. But and so he like pulls the gun. Jason have Bourne to kill this motherfucker. Knocks him right unconscious. Now. Matt Matt yeah. Damon knocked the actor unconscious doing this by accident. Which really did sell it. So you know, oh, no. yeah, I mean, that makes cinema a good The George Lazenby approach. Yeah, absolutely. He just really for like followed through on that on that punch. And the Harold Sagasa approach, just fucking mm-hmm. do it. Yeah, um, I w- I wrote down that the punch noises have gotten a lot better since the Born Identity, where it sounded like somebody like slapping a big steak every time somebody got punched. Uh, maybe that's just because they just recorded um, Matt Damon punching a man unconscious. I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Uh, so he he takes the cell uh, his like a uh, cell phone SIM card so he can like listen in. Uh, locks them in and 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 makes good his escape, and this poor fucking guy wakes up having had oh, his so fucking sad. entire like brain stoved in by Jason Bourne, and picks up his phone and immediately gets like, uh, he, I guess like dommed by Pamela Landy. She's just like she just really hectors him. For a bit, like yeah, she's like, I'm gonna call you back in 20 minutes, and you better have Jason Bourne in a cell. And meanwhile, this guy's like, you know, like clutching his head, like, what? What day yeah, is yeah, it? Like, I'm yeah, lost in this also, room. No, who is this? <laughs> he's locked in. He's fucking just had a concussion. Like his his, his friend, boss the, his fellow is yelling officer, at him. Is, is like unconscious. It's it's so great. I I almost clipped this bit where she's like. Uh, how, how long have you worked for the CIA? And he's like, uh, four years? Well, if you want to make it to five, then you fucking lock down everything and you get me Jason Bourne. Hack, tap, bypass, yeah, trace, verbs. back access, yeah, backflip, oh, do whatever. I, I, I still yeah. have that, that drop, in fact. Those are the targets. 
Beg, borrow, pack, tap, bypass. There's 25 cuts are happening. It's all very dramatic. Oh, also, this is the point where we, where we hear where we hear the song, the one the one bit of music that they have, oh, which is do 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 like two or four <laughs> bars that's the only music they have in this film <laughs> every time anything even slightly dramatic happens it begins that music and I, we're just like fucking hell so so, so <laughs> J- Jason Bourne is like listening in and the, the information that he gleans because she tells him all of this shit for no reason is uh, her name is Pamela Landy she works for the CIA uh, in Berlin where two guys were just killed by Jason Bourne uh, and he's like Wait, wait a second, I didn't do that. I have to like go to Berlin to clear my name and see what's going on. But he, and also- he, he so so hmm. instead of doing that, he goes to Munich. Yes. Can either of you explain to me why this scene is there? Yeah, okay. We we missed this scene. I feel like we I we don't know like what happened this in this scene. I like Please this scene. Tell me okay. So what so what, what he does is like uh, there's one of the Professor Chimp guys, one of the other Treadstone guys, who yeah. we didn't see in the previous movie, but you're supposed to intuit that he was like one of them. He was one of these super agents. Um and today he's living a quiet life in Munich as the most outgoing and vibrant German man, which is to say he lives in a totally blank, white and like steel house. He also has a um, gun in his fridge, which is incredibly he does have funny. A fridge gun. <laughs> yeah, the fridge the fridge gun. Um wh- wh- when he comes in, he immediately makes that Jason Bourne is in the house and like enters a silent alarm to his uh, like alarm thing. Then he goes for his fridge gun, which Jason has already emptied. <laughs> yeah, Jason, of course, has also been trained to put a to gun in the store fridge. Store guns in the fridge. That's where. That's where... <laughs> seriously, the shot is like we're following this agent through his house, and like it looks casual, and he's like going to the fridge for what we think is a snack. We see Jason Bourne come out from behind the camera with a gun and point the gun at behind the head. Whereupon the guy turns around and has pulled the gun out of the fridge, and I'm like, fridge Why gun. are you yeah. keeping a gun in the fridge? He's got one in every cupboard in the house. <laughs> fridge gun is like the CIA equivalent of pocket sand. You know, there's no counter to it <laughs> other than going into the fridge and taking the bullets out of the gun first. Does he have different calibers of gun? Like in the vegetable drawer, there's like one, like a bigger <laughs> one, and then I like got the top mm-hmm. shelf, he's got a nine millimeter. I, I would have respected this so much if the fight scene that ensues from this is him trying to like pull eight different concealed guns from different places. I think places. it would be really good. <laughs> but in, instead, or if he missed instead and just like turned is... a ketchup bottle on him, Jason Bourne would be like, mm. you put your ketchup in the fridge, you goddamn freak. J- Jason uh, holds him at gunpoint. He makes him like zip tie himself, and he demands information on who is running Treadstone because he thinks that the CIA are fucking with him. They've killed his girlfriend. They're now trying to kill him. Uh, Pamela Landy is now running Treadstone. It's the same thing that it was previously. And mm-hmm. our guy is sort of quite personably like, "Yeah, no, I don't fucking know anything. They closed it down. Stop kicking me off of chairs." This is like Jason's Jason's one interrogation moves. He sits him down in the chair and then he kicks him off the chair. And it just seems to irritate the guy more than anything. Yeah, once again he he's doing this thing of like, who am I? Who do I who work are you? for? Bonk, who bonk, sent me? Bonk, bonk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so Jason realizes that he pushed the silent alarm thing and the CIA are on their way. And so they fight. The guy comes at him with a knife. Just like a kitchen knife, he didn't have like a concealed like uh, fridge knife or anything. Um, yeah, yeah. I know to say what is happening because I can't see anything that happens in this fight. I I don't mind this scene, right? I I, I think the fight choreography is all right. Just let deal. down by the fucking cinematography. Um, yeah, no, I, I I like this movie. I like the moment where he realizes where Borden realizes that this this guy has outwitted him. Um, Bourne kills him, but it's like a closer run thing than it would be, which kind of gets the sense of like danger and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah but he doesn't then, learn anything. Uh, it's not clear no. why the scene's in there, except and then Jason Bourne blows his house up. In case you forget that Jason Bourne is like a dangerous man, yeah, and he blow he blows his house up by putting by by like starting a gas leak and then put, <laughs> and then putting a newspaper in a toaster. <laughs> That is true. Yeah. So that when it catches fire, it it blows up the thing and it kills the fucking CIA Mm. backup team. Fine. Whatever. Sure. Also, Pamela. I think think Mythbusters might have even done that one Mm. and determined it to not be a thing. Pamela, uh, Pamela, and yeah. uh, and and Brian Cox stop off in somewhere in Europe to pick up Julia Stiles from the last movie. 
the like CIA mm. handler. Uh, Only what's lass. really very interesting is uh, they've decided that she is this movie's hot girl, <sighs> right. and so they've given her hot girl she's makeup not. this time. She's she not. is. She's very no, pretty. I, but I what's interesting agree. is like in the first movie they gave her she very plain like makeup though. with like nude lips. Oh, yeah, wow, I mean there you go. Um, in the herself. first in the first movie they give her like very plain makeup, nude lip. In mm. this one, like her hair's a lot more stylish. They've given her like a darker, redder lip, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is you're you're this movie's hot girl. Good for you. <laughs> They've upgraded her. Yeah. They've, They've bumped they, her up. And and she identifies the biggest problem with this movie, right? Because they're trying to figure out why has Jason Bourne showed up using his passport with the name Jason Bourne and looked at the camera. It's almost like he wants us to find him, but that can't be the case. Um, and she, they go, maybe it's a mistake. To which she says... No, they don't make mistakes. They, they, they don't do anything by accident. They always have an objective. Um, and maybe the scary thing is maybe he's just making his own objectives now. Um, and th this is like the big weakness of this movie. It's something that I think about a lot is that they asked Daniel Craig at one point when he was deep into the sort of like, I am never playing James Bond again feelings. Um, what do you think we can learn from James Bond as a character? And he said, Nothing. Let's let's not <laughs> let's not pretend that there's a lot going on here. He has like uh, a, an objective and inner scene, and then he goes from one thing to the other thing to achieve the objective. Right? He doesn't have any inner life. Um, and the same thing is true of Jason Bourne, especially now that there's no sort of like outside counterpoint to be like, but Jason, why are you doing all of this spycraft shit? Yeah. Why and are you no using your powers? As well. Yeah, now it's just, it, he sets out to do the thing, and he does the thing. And he maybe, like, suffers a bit, but it, it's not that interesting. He doesn't have any inner life. Um, but, so, she she criticizes this movie from the inside, and then we just move on. Um, yeah, it's good. I enjoyed that. <laughs> he, 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 she... Yeah, there's a. St I don't know, man. There's a lot of a lot of shots in it. I'd also like to highlight a guy who never does anything, but he's in like eighty percent of the scenes. He's called Tom. Mm. Uh, he's he's just got short short black hair, and oh, he's yeah, just yeah, also the there. Sure. What's he's just his around. purpose? He's <laughs> like, he's he's Tanner sort of, to me, right? Yeah, he's Tanner. That's exactly who he is. Is he um, the one who who's about to get fucking iced? That no, that's guy? Danny. No, no, that's, that's basically Danny, yeah. like e each each one of so there's two big CIA agents here, Pamela and Brian Cox, and each of them has a Tanner. Uh, mm -hmm. Danny Zorn uh, is is Brian Cox's Tanner, and then Pamela's Tanner is this other guy, and they just kind of each are allocated one, I guess. It's kind of like forklifts in the Cars movies, nice. right? They I'd, just I'd when, whenever they need tanner, somebody. That'd be cool. Who like can do something? They just make them a forklift. Same thing with this. They just give mm -hmm. them a tanner. Um, anyway, so Jason Bourne goes to Berlin. He gets some flashbacks of having been in Berlin before, um, and then he finds this CIA girl boss because she's staying in a five star hotel under her own name. And yeah, under her real name, which is which we fa like. The last movie hinged on the fact that Bourne didn't stay in a, at a hotel in Berlin using his real name. That's he used a, a fake point. name for that. Yeah. So, like, they've just gotten worse at OPSEC. She's just, yeah, she, she, he calls around every hotel uh, above a certain price range using terrible German, by the way, and he's like, yo, you got, mm. a, you got a Pamela Landy here? And one of them, and then they're all like, no, 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 and one of them's like, uh, let me check, and he hangs up and he's like, that's the one. And it's like, it's meant to be cool, but it's like, why would she use her real name? The reception yeah. is like CIA Pamela Landy. Yeah, she's here, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> he finds out. He finds out what room she's in. Even um, although then this was follows her to the local CIA office. Yeah, and and then this, this is, is fucking weird. The experience where she found out what room she was in was very strange. I kind of like this. I thought it was clever. The idea is, um, he he calls the number that he already has for her, uh, at, with her like extension on his cell phone. And then he goes up to the desk, asks them to call the room. Uh, so he sees what room they're calling. Um, and then because he's already calling it on her cell phone, they're like, oh, it's busy. So he just leaves. He doesn't have to speak to her. He doesn't have to like give his name or anything. He's just like, oh, it's fine. I'll check back later. And hangs up his no, phone. No, it, it's, 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 it's fine up to a point. But like, what, why does he have her room number but... on like 
Why did he have her her fucking like room's phone number? That's a great question. Because if he's question. calling her That's mobile, a great they would be calling question. They'd be calling her room's phone number, which is the landline. It's different. Yeah, he would have to call um, the hotel and speak to the woman that he just speaks to. Like, th- th- fuck shit, this doesn't make any sense. Ah, I kind of look cool at the time. He doesn't ever use this information. Anyway, he follows it. Then we do get quite a fun scene where he uh, he looks through. He like goes to the building opposite CIA headquarters in Berlin and like looks mm. at Pam through the window with a sniper rifle, and then and then calls her. Uh, he's like, "Who do I work for? Who sent me? Who am I?" <laughs> yeah. Um, did, have What's you my seen deal the, this have movie? You, have you can seen you, the first Can you bring film? me the allegedly hot girl from the first movie, please? What's my objective? And, yeah. and, and she, she's she's generally pretty straight with him. She's like, "You have to come in. You killed two of my guys. I want to know about it." Uh, uh, Brian Cox is here also, and then yeah, the first Brian time Cox wants him dead, Pam wants him alive. So that's the, quite a nice yeah. complex. The, the the first time that she tries to bullshit him though. Is he's like bring bring me the allegedly hot girl, and he's like, and she's like, well, what if I can't find her? He goes, well, you're looking at her right now. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's like that's that, quite that's, a fun moment. That's like yeah, the spinning no, Jason fun. Bourne moment. Is yeah. you get really the movie, was, yeah. <laughs> um, Also, yeah, uh, standing right next to you, Bri- Brian up, Cox. Yeah. Brian Cox says um, another thing. You're in a big puddle of shit, Pamela, and you don't have the shoes for it. All of his lines are like this. All of them. Yeah, it's like, so much. You can't stop he's, saying. He's this just note shit. this. Um, so, so he also he, there's some really bad ADR in this scene where like we cut to Pam giving an order and she just says something completely different in the audio than what she said on set. Like it's very noticeable. It's really like sort of distant. Anyway, so he he like arranges a meeting with the uh, the allegedly hot girl. What's her fucking name? I Nicolette. can't keep calling her that. And she is hot. Nicolette. Uh, okay, sure. Whatever you She's say. She's blonde and American. Those are the two things. And she <laughs> billed as Nikki in this one, which you know. uh, yeah, and um, because she's sexy now. Um, at Ward yeah, tries to right. like position snipers mm-hmm. and stuff to kill Jason Bourne. Um, and and he like easily outwits them with the help of a, a, a convenient German left wing demonstration that happens, which mm. gives him cover. And we get here to like. The funniest thing about this movie, which is the way that it treats German-speaking people, which is to say, <laughs> they love to it's say so things in German all the time. And so, as he's pushing through this 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 uh, demonstration, wh- one of the protesters even just goes. <laughs> It's sort of like you, you just like isolate that and boost it. I just want that as a drop. It's really <laughs> das good. Das ist verboten. Das ist Wonderful. verboten. Uh, das ist so, verboten. Do, do you remember how the, the first movie kind of had this sort of like uh, quiet, sort of electric tension of like feeling like you're being watched and stuff. Um, yes, I recall this. Well, it, this one doesn't do that. Instead, the way that it communicates you are being watched is to have like 50 people yell at each other and to do the... The way that it communicates rising threat is to slowly turn up a big dial that just says number of people speaking German. Yes, yes. It's like, oh shit, they're all speaking German. That's literally true. I mean, historically, that's also like a good true <laughs> so so he he kidnaps Nikki, interrogates her, and she's like, Treadstone is over. Uh n- nobody fucking uh, like everyone thinks you killed those guys. You've never been in Berlin before. And he's like, You're lying to me, because I remember having been in Berlin. She's like, No, it's not in your file. When you were officially part of the unofficial death squad, you never did any work in Berlin. And he 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 like terrifies her to the point of like uh, sobbing, and then just yeah her yeah. Sleeves. He's very horrible to her in this scene. We love we love a woman crying in terror, don't we? Uh, absolutely, yeah. uh, very difficult to be uh, yeah sympathetic towards this character now. Um, just mm. sort of sort of horrendously treated. Yeah, the, uh, this woman. So so uh, we, we remember the off. name. He remembers a name. He remembers the name Nesky, and that had yes. something to do with his Nesky first boy. job in Berlin. So he he googles Nesky. Uh, and finds that Nesky was a Russian MP who was like an opponent of oil privatization, uh, whose wife killed him in a murder suicide in his hotel room in Berlin, allegedly. Yeah, the hotel Brecker. And then we have to get back to some more intrigue with Brian Cox. Ah, oh, yeah, this is a fun oh, scene. So, so, like so, this so, I liked this. So, so, so Danny Zorn. Zorn. Danny Zorn, who is, again, Brian Cox's Tanner. Mm hmm. 
like summons him down to the basement, uh, where he's like, "Yo, have you seen these bombs?" And at this point, I wrote down, "Why is there ops room in the same building yeah. that two of their guys got killed in, and it's which haunted. they were using for? Why? Why would you use the same they've building? Got one. Look, they've only got one building in Berlin. It's it's a you shame. You can't it fucking all has get a we work. Fuck me, dude. I so uh, Danny Zorn is like, listen." You know how in the when you saw this scene for the first time, you were like, "Hey, it's kind of stupid to use explosives to blow up these wires, and also to use two bombs." Well, it was stupid, and this means that this is bait. And I think someone planted this to frame Jason Bourne and whoever yeah, that the, person the is. The second bomb that like allegedly didn't go off that they found Bourne's fingerprint on. Danny's like, if this if this went off, it wouldn't really do anything because this wire just controls like the coffee machine or something. Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, if if you had the ability to get in here and set this up, you'd have the knowledge now that you didn't need to. Mm. Like. All that it occurs, you can just turn the lights off and do the same yeah. thing afterwards. So, right? so, so whoever's trying to frame Jason Bourne, it, c- it could be anyone. It could be you. It could be me. It could be someone that I've just led into a dark room with no witness. Oh fuck! And he gets stabbed. Yeah, the entire uh, plot gets figured out by Mister also appearing in this movie. Uh, yeah. And then Brian Cox is like, "That's crazy, mate. That's absolutely insane." Show me that again. And the second yeah, he, he, he uses back his back fridge he knife. <laughs> Like 80 also, shots in the back. No because, because this is edited like really like frantically, I couldn't quite tell what Brian Cox had done, and we had to rewind. And it it looks as if Brian Cox just grabs both sides of his head and gives him a little kiss on the ear, and then he does. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, 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 this is going in a very different you're, direction. It's like you're you're very clever just for leading me down death. here. Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> he just dies of surprise. <laughs> Yeah, that's. I mean, that's Brian Cox's secret weapon. Really, is the kiss of death. Yeah, when but, you get but that. so 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 Danny's on before he gets the kiss of death. Um, he figures out somebody is covering their tracks by trying mm. to blame Jason Bourne and Chris Cooper, the villain from the first film. So whoever the real traitor is, they're trying to set Bourne up. And Brian, and then Brian Cox is like, "I love you, kiss me." <laughs> Very different. Brian movie. Cox, the one guy who so far has been like, "Yo, we need to one hundred percent kill Jason Bourne as yeah. soon as the opportunity yeah. presents itself," <laughs> because it's really awkward that he's here. The guy who has been like sweating buckets anytime Jason Bourne's name is mentioned. <laughs> yeah, quietly going, "Jesus Christ." I had nothing to do with this. Are you sure? It was an illegal kill operation. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, he's a terrible yeah. liar. <laughs> So, so Bourne goes to the Hotel Brecker, where he like breaks into the room where he remembers doing the killing, and he remembers killing Nesky and his wife and making it look like a murder-suicide. And he remembers seeing uh, a family photo on the way out of them with their daughter, because once again, this movie doesn't have any new ideas, and so this MF loves being confronted by kids during his murders. Mm-hmm. Loves it. He's always doing that. Now... At this point, it's so cool how completely unconnected the A and B plots are. Dev, what did you what did you say the the this movie's rising threat was? A uh, number of people speaking German. A bunch of people and, arrived to speak German yeah, 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 very yeah, yeah. quickly at this, this point. Is so good. There is, there's like a trillion cops all rock up. I love this shit. And they just the door. I like, love this like shit. Like Pokemon, they all just start yelling, Polizzi! 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 Every step. Each one of perfect. them individually is yeah. yelling, Polizzi! Here's the thing, right? This is a little fact about me. I mm-hmm. love a scene of a guy escaping a SWAT raid. Mm. I love it in Hitman Contracts. I love it in Leon the Professional. I love that shit. It's fantastic. It's That's a why great we keep way. Sending them to your apartment. Absolutely, we know that you love it. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. It, and it's a great way to show the contrast between the cops who are like kicking doors in and being like Polizei and your calm, composed protagonist, right? Mm-hmm. So. He he kind of escapes by climbing up onto the roof. He's being chased by the cops. And incidentally, this has some truly fantastic, like, early noughties German cop aesthetic. All of them are wearing leather jackets. They have the, like, mm. green and silver cars. One of the guys who, like, kicks his door in is wearing a knitted balaclava with an ice cold red trim around the eye hole for no reason that yeah, he like sick as hell, brought actually. from home they're wearing the like big like sek helmets to wear like a headset underneath it it's it's cool as hell anyway so mm-hmm. jason Bourne sort of escapes 
And then as he's walking out, for the first time in two movies, someone thinks to put a cordon around something. And one of the German cops is like, Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. Setting... Jesus Christ, das ist Jason Bourne. <laughs> Jesus Christ, das ist Jason Bourne into his radio. And this sets off a foot chase as he tries to like escape <laughs> through the <a> station. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, all of the more cops arrive. And every single one of them loves to shout Polizei or Standleiben yeah. every two nein, steps. Nein, nein, we already did that. This is verboten. <laughs> Auf dem Weg, Polizei. Polizei, <laughs> 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 das ist verboten. Das ist verboten. Um, <laughs> now, uh, Jason, Germany. Jason. Jason has a problem here, which is that they've disabled his amazing teleportation powers from the first movie, yeah. and he has mm. to actually escape. Um, he loses them by giving him a little loop de loop. Yeah. Yeah, Every single cop in Berlin has like the easiest to lose AI on the fucking planet. <laughs> Yeah, like, must Very have been simple. Zavind. Um, <laughs> every, yeah, every single cop. He jumps onto a boat because he remembers his training as a fisherman and, like, easily <laughs> yes. loses them He thereafter. instinctively seeks out boats. They're, they're, mm. they're like, have you, have you checked out the steers on this leather jacket? It's amazing. Uh, all of these guys are, like, going to Bergheim later. That's fucking sick, bro. That's fucking sick, nasty. I That's wish fucking sick, nasty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, yeah. I don't know. I really, I really enjoy all their fits. I, I enjoy the way they act. I think it's cool that they are essentially NPCs. It's really good. To yeah, the, the German just... cops really are the sort of the the many Kaufmans of this movie. <laughs> they, they just it's completely so derailed, Shout out derailed to the, the rest German of the movie police for me. force. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Come on um, the pod, all of you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the entire Berlin police guesting on the pod. <laughs> they were just yelling <laughs> pod. Also, this is the so second through. time, it's Alice, that you have complimented the outfit of specifically German police. Because I remember when we did Octopus, you were like, need to cop that green motorcycle. It's, uh, it's oh, an shit, aesthetic. That's actually right. It's an aesthetic. <laughs> Before they decided to make it into like the kind of... EU bullshit where everything was dark blue. When German cops had green as a colour, I think it was based, and I'm yeah, standing by is. this. Especially a green leather jacket. Anyway, um, so Pamela goes to Hotel Brecker, and she goes to the room that Jason Bourne was like scratching around in, having memories. And she's like, what happened here? I remember what happened here. This guy Nesky got killed here, and she weirdly she says, "I remember a photo of a chalk outline on the floor." Which I don't, maybe there's a sure. that a carpet. A that must have been quite difficult to do. Yeah, a guy just chalking a, a hotel carpet, and she's like, "Wait, wait a second. This is so he killed Nesky on Conklin's orders as like a, a sort of an unauthorized thing." This, th what, what, what does this mean, right? I'm, I'm starting to look more suspiciously at my co-worker who, like, has not done any tasks at all. He's just been present, yeah. <laughs> not even faking it. Fucking ridiculous. So, uh, um, we see that Brian Cox calls Gretchkov, um, and yes. it, was, it was them that embezzled the 20 million, and, like, Conklin was in on it and had a little bit of it, um, but the, those two are the guys who are, who are in on it, and, and, like, they killed Nesky as part of this. And now they have to kill Bourne to try and cover it up. Um, and, then, uh, and then basically Gretchkov's like, ah, get fucked, I'm not asked. Like, Jason Bourne's already dead, I don't believe you, fuck you, like... Yeah, yeah, my fact. guy told me he was a hundred percent confident that Jason Bourne yeah. was dead. Yeah, uh, and he um, and he wouldn't be wrong. This is a great example in like trusting your people. You know, yeah. you uh, delegate, and then, he, and then you trust the results that you when get. When Brian Cox hangs up, Jason Bourne is obviously behind him in the hotel room, tape recording the yeah. whole of thing. Of course, yeah, 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 yeah. And Brian Cox pisses his pants. He's like, "You're an animal, Wolverine. You'd you always <laughs> be an animal." I created you, goddamn mutants! He really is just fucking doing X Men here. But he's like, okay, okay, kill me then. And Jason Bourne goes, no, she wouldn't want me to. What I'm instead gonna do is I'm gonna take the tape, I'm gonna give that to Pamela, and I'm gonna leave you a loaded gun, um, it, uh, trusting that you won't shoot Pamela or shoot me in the back as I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah I would you should have done that. It's give weird. someone it's... a loaded gun and then like turn my back on them. And it's like such a like leave. 90, 1940s British Jason Bourne. I've left you your service revolver so you can commit, can commit honourable suicide. 
Um, he leaves. Pamela walks in. I guess like it's like a re- fucking revolving Just door in this each hotel other room. In the fucking like yeah. hallway. Give exactly. a quick up nod. You know. Uh, he, he he points the gun at her, and she's like, "I uh, I fucking knew it was you." Uh, and, and then he does it. He does the it, thing. He kills himself made. like an idiot. I, why would he do this? Mm. There is yeah. no yeah, reason. It doesn't make really any sense at all. Um, mm. But that's yep, and that's and that's that. So yeah, you would think this would be the end of the movie, but but no. But we there's have... a guy we forgot to check back in on, baby. Yes, yes. There is it's... a guy doing the funniest activity it's possible to do. Yeah, this I will, is, I'll let this, Abby this describe it. This is so it. funny. Carl Urban is in Clapham Inferno's Moscow. Um, the worst yeah. club I've ever seen in my life. This is genuinely unbelievable, right? So it, it cuts to the inside of a club. And as a normal human being, when you see the inside of a club, you go, ah, yes, I understand the time of day that this must be occurring at. Yeah. Yes. Because, like, Nesky is fucking in there. Not uh, whatever his Carl Urban. name is. Yeah. Carl Urban is Carol, in there. Yeah, Carl Urban. Yeah, Mark Strong is in there. Mark and Strong. He's, the and bad he's guy just in all of these movies by can't women. be Mark Strong. We can't say that the guy in all of these movies is Mark Strong when it isn't. Perhaps you can't. Um, but Mark Strong <laughs> is in there, and he's surrounded by women, and he gets the fucking call on his phone that's just like, A, uh, Ari Jason Bourne. <laughs> Following up on this. <laughs> and he goes, oh, for fuck's sake, and walks out through the doors, and you see it's like 3 p.m. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Total daylight. Yeah, it's very funny. Just, like all the, he's like drinking, all these girls are there in that wear short evening skirts. He gets up and walks outside and it's just the middle of the day. <laughs> and Gretchkov's like, like, where have you been? And he's like, You told me to take a month off. Like, I've been here the whole time. He's getting his fucking money's worth out of that month yeah, off. Oh, absolutely. That. Absolutely. Um and so Jason Bourne has arrived in Moscow. Uh Pamela tips off the Russians that he's coming. Just to be helpful, I guess. Um, and so he has to like escape from the cops in a taxi. We have to. We this being a Jason Bourne movie, he has to escape from the cops in a shitty little car. In this case, it's like a vulgar taxi. But the cops are onto him, and they pursue him. And so too does uh, uh, fucking Carl Urban, right? Who we see is an FSB agent. Uh, he he works for the Russian. Secret Service, which this is fine, good. I like this. Yeah, this is fun moment where Jason Bourne is walking by the side of a river, and Carl Urban is on the bridge, maybe he like twenty him, to thirty meters behind him, him and in broad daylight, just like pulls out a gun and shoots him in the shoulder. And then the yeah, cops like, rock up man. and arrest Carl Urban. He's like, "I work for the FSB." <laughs> yeah, I have I have a literal man, get out of jail free card. Fuck my you. man wants to get back to that club now. Yeah, <laughs> he's just he's so done with Jason Bourne. Yeah. He's like doing this on his lunch break. <laughs> yeah. It's honestly so good. He sees Jason Bourne and he's like, all right, bullet time. Like, yeah. it's there's no planning, there's nothing else there. He only strikes by rivers. He get he he fires in broad daylight and then like a bunch of cops surround him and he like drops his gun and just yells safe and they go, ah fuck. Get him. <laughs> ah shit. Uh, <laughs> Skin cheese. <laughs> So at this point, Jason, Jason Bourne has been shot, and um, what, what he has to do is he has to break into a supermarket and confront the most tactical Russians of all, supermarket security guards. Oh, Christ. He, he Paul grabs Blatsky, some, like, more cop. Yeah, he, he grabs some bandages, he grabs some vodka, uh, and one of the Russian security guys tries to stop him. Curiously, they're not wearing the, like, blue urban camouflage that Russian supermarket security wear. Um, but he, uh, one of them tries to stop him, and he, uh, Bourne just pulls a gun on him. And this sets off chase number two. He also spits uh, vodka into a police officer's face in a, in a very petty yep. move. It's quite funny. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Um, uh, and then... So the cops are chasing him. Kirill's chasing him in a, a like a Mercedes G wagon that he's like carjacked. And then my favorite part of this, um, at one point, one of the cops just goes, "Yo, this is too much for us." Requesting FSB backup, and we cut to four guys wearing leather jackets over suits driving Mercedes E classes arrive that's on the scene, baby. and that's it. That's the FSB. I love them. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so good. It's- we get a we get a pretty cool car chase. Yeah, yeah, no, legitimately a good car chase. I, this is, I've written down my most like visibly irritated note in this entire podcast mm-hmm. here, which is, nice chase, if I could see any of it. 
uh, because the cuts become unbearable at this point. The way that they have to convey fastness, right, is you get uh, a shot of Jason changing the gear, you get a shot of his foot on the accelerator, and then you get another shot. And they do this, like, gear chained foot thing, like, three or four times yeah, in the course man, of this I... chase. It's real bad. Um, so, uh, he, he evades the cops, and then he and Kirill drive into a tunnel to do a kind of car jutsu fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Pretty, it's pretty sick. They have Impossible like a gunfight in the tunnel, happening. yeah. And then he, like, drives Kirill into a lane divider. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if you get into a really bad car chase, uh, and a really bad car crash, I mean, in your life, generally speaking, you can apply the wisdom of the Bourne movies, and you just walk it off. J Jason Bourne... <laughs> He's fine. He just gets out and goes, whoa, lord. <laughs> He just he just gets out, sees Carol, who is like I'm not sure if we're meant to understand that he is dying or if he's just badly injured. Uh, but I guess he, we'll decide whether or not he uh, we'll decide on that based on whether or not he's in the third film. But he he mm. chooses not to shoot him at least, and he mm. just leaves. Yeah, he simply also, walks out of the tunnel, and like nobody. The way yeah, the there's way a that shitload they... of cops there, and he just goes like, "It is time now for me to head on out." Safe. Like broad daylight, yeah. just walks out of the fucking, not even like hugging a wall, straight out of the center of the tunnel. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing, the like, thing is, that's the right, scene about Russian cops is if they're going to arrest you, you can just this say, will come up "No, later. no, you don't." Yeah, that's true. That is true. <laughs> Simply <laughs> flick them on the nose. Also, Safe. the the way that um the way that they convey that Mark uh, that Carl Urban is dying or whatever is that he has two streaks of of stage blood and they have sprinkled some fucking safety glass on top of his head like he's, he's a pastry. In it, yeah. <laughs> he looks yeah. like he looks like a pastry. It looks like sugar. <laughs> really fucking probably is. Stupid. Yeah. No oh, sugar glass oh, yeah. in this a, case. A lightly I guess. glazed Carl Urban. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then Gretchkov is arrested for some reason. I don't know why. This is, is this is the most optimistic thing. Pa we see Pamela there, and she has like fixed it for the FSB to arrest Gretchkov for corruption. I guess, yeah. which is <laughs> yeah. hysterical. Of, like, giving him a medal, which is what they would yeah. do. <laughs> even even if you want to get rid of an oligarch, you like throw them out of a window or something. You don't arrest them. But also, he stole twenty million dollars from the CIA. Surely they'd be like, yes, well done. He does look a bit like Kodobowski. <laughs> Great work, boys. But like, yeah, yeah, well, well, anyway, so um, what happens then is uh, Jason, Jason Bourne has learned at some point during this shit that the daughter of Nesky, uh, the politician that he killed, uh, oh, is, is living in, in, in the, the project outside of town. Um, and he, he goes to the Russian tower block that James Bond goes to at the end of Spectre, to have yeah. an identical moment of quite emotional quite a catharsis. Tower block. Yeah, of course. He, he, yeah, he goes there, he breaks into her house like a fucking nonce, holds her at gunpoint, and is like, I'm not I gonna hurt Algerian you. Like Algerian love knot. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, now yeah. he says out loud, he also says the word, you're older than I thought you'd be as well, and I wrote oh, nonce, oh, which is oh, yeah. um, it's the first time I've hit Jason Bourne with a nonce, so yep, yep, that uh, down. Now, I mean, first of all, just knock on her door like a normal person. Second of all, no. this this scene is so clearly like Matt Damon going, can I please do some acting in this movie? <laughs> just as a God. treat, at the end, can I get five minutes where this fucker has emotions? Because he doesn't have any when he fucking like, looks at his dead girlfriend. Um... But now he like gets his like redemptive moment, and one of the things I do appreciate about this movie is that it seems empty and pathetic. I'm not sure if it's intended to, but he yeah. looks like shit. He's like probably like broken a leg or something in Germany. He's like been shot. He looks exhausted. And he's like, uh, I would want to know if it was me. I killed your parents. Yeah, they didn't your kill mother. Each yeah, other. but like. It's it's touching and it's nice that he feels the need to kind of apologize and tell her the truth, but also like he doesn't make himself physically vulnerable when he does no. this. So like, what the? It's like, a gun. Yeah, like what the fuck is she supposed to do? Like he should have given her the gun. That's yeah. that's the way this scene goes. Is you give her the gun and you go, like, you can kill me if you want, and then she goes, no, I don't want to. Like I forgive you. Like that's how you write this scene. Otherwise, it's just he just turns up and just ruins this woman's life again and then leaves. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't even yeah, tell her so, why. Like, He's not even like, yeah, it was part of a CIA death squad. It's part He's of just a like, secret death squad. Oh my God, no, you're right. I just, he doesn't even tell you don't her. have the clearance. He's just like, fuck it, no. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just killed them on on orders from Tim Westwood. <laughs> <laughs> you walk. 
British it was, radio it was part DJ. Of, it was a spin-off from Pimp My Ride UK. The British re- radio DJ and TV host Tim Westwood ordered think me the, to kill your parents. I think the Tim Westwood bit might be our single least penetrable <laughs> bit for Yo, any dog. listeners outside. <laughs> Yo, dog! I murdered your parents. <laughs> I don't I know anything know about was it. You. Just kidding. Actually, it was a secret CIA Black Ops kill <laughs> squad. <laughs> my my t- my two notes for this scene are just like uh, in brackets, kindly, lovingly. I killed your parents, and yeah. then afterwards, like he's already working through his own emotions here by just going to a yeah. woman's house and being like, "Yeah, I killed your mom and dad." Yeah, um, and I feel bad about it, so you can't be mad at me. He- Goodbye. <laughs> And and so he he leaves. He bumps into he bumps into James Bond dropping off the Algerian love knot. It's um, on it's, the way yeah, in. Yeah, he just it's the he fucking just an absolution tower block. You just head in there, you finish your plot off, and then you you crack right on. Well, the thing that I do like here is the the way that it's shot, the way that it's acted, is that he doesn't really look that absolved. He looks like shit still. He still looks pathetic. He just walks away. This is where the movie was originally going to end. This is where it should have ended. This is where the franchise should have ended. Yeah. Um. Again, uh, another movie over. Actually, the franchise should have ended at the end of the previous film. Well, yeah, that too. But if we couldn't have that, then ending it here would have been fine. But uh, the thing about Americans is that they're infants, and they don't like films that make them feel bad, even when it makes them feel bad by accident. And so this ending didn't test very well, because it made people sad. So, Aww, does the CIA oh, murderer oh. not get a happy ending? So, So instead... They had to pull Matt Damon off of Ocean's 12 and do reshoots for the new ending, which tested much higher, which is Pamela Landy is in New York, hanging out, working, looking at Jason Bourne's 3x5 glossies, and she gets a phone call, and she doesn't immediately do the, you're outside the fucking window with a sniper rifle again, aren't you dipshit, that I would do. She goes... She's just Who like giving this? him the finger from from the tower, just like <laughs> yeah. how many fingers am I holding up, jackass? Just like, like it's like yeah, she doesn't try and shine a laser pointer out at him or something. No, she's like she's like, who is this? It's Jason Bourne. Um, and Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, that's Jason Bourne. And I knew this was going to be the fucking Moby scene. We're moving towards it because the last uh, the the last movie ended with <laughs> Moby, and so so will this. She's like. You should you should come in. We can talk about it. He's like, no. And she's like, well, okay. But I want you to know that the CIA is good now. We would never do the bad things again. We're nice. Also, uh, here is your dead name. Uh, you, you were here is the name in your files. It's David Webb. You were born in Nixon, Missouri. And he's like, he oh, re- yes. he, he reacts to this like, uh-huh. uh huh. And then yeah, it's like, what do you? Okay, who cares, man? Great. Yeah, uh, this was this information valuable. David it used to be called uh, David Mitchell and Webb. They should have um, given him. A, they should have given him because J- David Webb is still like a cool spy name. He should have been like your real name is Hieronymus Dipshit. Like so. <laughs> your real name is Raphael Ambrosius Cousteau. Or even even just like in a shocking twist, this is like your name was Rachel Webb. Like ah yeah, we oh. f- we we used hormones to make them all male. But yeah, no, and he does he does the fucking thing again. He's like, get some rest, Pam. You look tired because I'm looking at you from outside with a sniper rifle, because that's the thing that I like to do, because I'm Jason Bourne. I'm outside your windows, I'm looking in, I'm seeing what's going on, how's it going? Oh, I hate this uh, fucking cunt so it's, much. It's wonderful, it's stupid. I hate this movie. It should have ended. Let's go to friend of a show, Phoebe, for analysis. I don't think that this is a piece of art. I think that this is a uh cynical <laughs> cynical piece of uh, piece of fan fiction is what that's, I think this is. That's fucking right. Damn right, Phoebe. Which, that's a good which drop. Which is a fucking drop of her that I have on record because it's everything we've ever talked about. That's right. <laughs> that's just, right. That's the art. thing that I make you this watch. This is shit. Um, we should incorporate over. that into into the mega drop for when we kill James Bond. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Well, this has been the Bourne supremacy. Do we have any 
closing fucking thoughts about yeah, the shitty I mean, movie. I think it tells us something interesting about sequels, right? Because I, I mm. compare and contrast this to The Matrix Reloaded, um, which, uh, mm. you know, not everyone likes that film, but as a sequel, I think it is exceptionally good because it, it has expands. some meat to it. Yeah, yeah, it also like expands on on the original. It's like, oh, all that stuff about like breaking out of the system. Uh, actually, that's just another means of control. Cool, great way to like escalate what you set up in the first one. This like doesn't really add anything to the themes of the first one, which were like, hey, have you tried being normal? Uh, and this one is like, <laughs> uh, and, and now it's cooler if you're not. And I'm like, okay, great. Glad I tried being normal, and this one's it. like, no, and it's cool that I haven't. Thank they you. Try, they try to pull <laughs> off the fucking laziest plot hook possible of uh, you think you're out, but you get dragged back in because you can never really be out because of how special you are, right? It's the easiest thing to land in the world, and they don't fucking land it. It's I mean, insane it's a fine that they can't. Film, but I'm just like, uh, uh, you're not. It's not about anything anymore. It, uh, as I said boring. at the start, it should have been called Born Again. Uh, 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 uh. But we have a science space system on this podcast. That's Part right, we, we do. We, we have do. the Girth system. Mm -hmm. uh, which stands for, going through my notes here, how much this movie cares about glory, intellectualism, respecting the troops, and heterosexuality. So, glory in this movie. Do, do we think that this is a particularly glorious or glory-obsessed movie? I mean, he's not really that bothered about, like, honour and patriotism and stuff. Certainly, no. like, there's there's less of that kind of thing than, even than you would expect from a post-9-11 movie, so... He, he does restraint. leave Brian Cox the option of an honourable suicide rather than kill him himself, which is shown to be morally better. Yes, that's true. That is true. Um... But even so, like, because he, he's like black ops and off the books, and like, I don't know. I think it's going to score fairly low overall. I, I do so. feel like, like a one. I could. The last I, I, one would, was a I one. wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go down to a one. I think the suicide thing makes it a two. Okay. Um, sure. Again, he's not particularly insecure about like like being clever is not a, a, a dipshit thing to do. Like, yeah, intellectual. Brian is Cox like, was like yeah. a Poindexter, like a oh, I'm, I'm not manly and stuff. Um, then that might be good. But uh, no, again, yeah. I think it's fairly low. I think it is going to be a one here. I don't think, mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure. Respecting um, the troops. Last time we gave it a two. A little bit, a little bit more this time. Yeah, I would it's say, slowly pumping up. We There's go a lot from like more CIA. The, the CIA, one. the CIA, like, has authorized this death squad, but it's done it for like, um, sort of like broadly necessary reasons to the CIA did it but also it would never do it again kind of like it's such a yeah. damage control thing and it's it fits into the pattern of damage control that the CIA would use in real life for things like all of the torture it did of being like yeah no all of the same people are still in charge and in fact we rewarded and promoted them but that was a different time in our nation's history and we would never do that again now we've gone from yeah. the cia contains one rogue element to the cia contains one rogue man brian cox yes yeah and crucially uh like all that's required is that we provide the cia with the girl bosses it needs to rigorously audit itself yes that's definitely. right three i don't I yeah, I, I'd say three. I don't think it's up there with like zero dark thirsty or anything, but yeah, I think three. Um, it's not overly mm -hmm. insecure about heterosexuality though, because Jason Bourne no. is is like pretty sexless in this actually, because his yeah, girlfriend plus, gets JFK'd in the first fifteen minutes. Plus, Brian Cox gives Danny Zorn a little kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he does give him a little kiss, which is quite, I think, quite forward. I think it's quite um, yeah. If anything, it's very. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was groundbreaking for the time. Yeah, uh, I mean, Jason Bourne is quite sexless as a hero, in the same way that like John Wick is. Yeah, yeah. Or Agent Forty Seven. Yeah, uh, I, I, I could, I could quite happily do. Well, no, hold on, because he's stop bringing up the Hitman movie. No, I won't. They're gonna, um, they're gonna t make us do it. I, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna make you do it. I, I, he does get oh. like spurred onto his rampage of revenge by the loss of like his woman, which true, is true, true. Mm, yeah, you, we do fridge. We, fr a, we fridge a, a the love. fuck out of Frank and yeah. Vicente. Yeah, yeah, true. How do we feel about a one or a two? I'd go. I'd go. Mm, I'd go one. one. I mean, it's bad, but sure. it's like less than yeah. last time. Uh, yeah, that means yeah. one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six, seven. That's a double O seven. So it's getting worse, but still pretty low. It's get, it's, it's getting worse, but uh, you know, talk to your doctor about the effect of long Jason Bourne because we have three more of these. Fucking movies. You know, I didn't realize there were so many fucking Jason Bourne movies. Yeah. One of them doesn't have Matt Damon in it, which is very yeah, funny. Yeah, good. Um, and and yeah, 
in what, a way, like I am quite excited to see how these films develop because we've gone from one that was filmed pre nine eleven. This is now just post nine eleven. So I'm looking forward to seeing how like culture changes as this franchise yeah, develops. Yeah, yeah. There's very the much a remit like, here on Kill James Bond. The culture is kind of like right. downstream of the the history here, and this is like. This came out 2004, which meant they were making it and writing it when, like, the Iraq war was starting and then, mm -hmm. like, continuing. It wasn't even clear that it was going to be the quagmire that it was yet. So, like, yeah, 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 yeah. no, we're, 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 we'll, we'll come back to you for 2007's The Bourne Ultimatum, Ooh. which is right about the time for things to get really bad, I think. Absolutely. Also, um, I just want to make a quick announcement i don't know if yeah. we have a cronstein or a good night no necessary but um so. if you go to the kill james bond website we now have all of the scum scores for previous bond films really? on a page you can do uh, sabermetrics on us you yes. can check all of the scum scores uh, a table it sucked we tried a couple of things but we think it looks quite nice now so oh, cool. it was a shame to call the next bond movie drop tables um <gasps> Yeah, it's <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Fucking cunts, I swear to God. <laughs> well, we oh, I hate ki ki Kill James Bond slash Kill Jason Bourne slash uh, Assigned Movies at Birth will return for the Bourne Ultimatum. Stop it. <laughs> Thank you for listening to yet another episode of Kill James Bond. Join us in two weeks' time for The Bourne Ultimatum, is what I believe that the next Bourne is called. Um, but if that is simply too long for you to wait, you can head on over to our Patreon, uh, where we upload bonus episodes every other week. The next bonus episode will be Shoot Them Up. Shoot them up. I'm gonna piss everyone off by pronouncing it like that every single time. And speaking, of course, of our wonderful patrons, special thanks to our fifteen pounds and above patrons, and those are Christine Fox, Fox Winchester, Paint McCalla, Jack Holmes, George Rohack, Thomas Oberhart, British Pterodactyl, Sol, Charles Schultz, Nikki, Phil West Music, Carolyn Tankersley, Max Kapinski, Benno Rice, Kit Devine, Michael Ladder, Amanda Rogder, Max Gamenhard, Jonathan Gerde, Dread Pirate Robin, Hell Blood Hands, Jay Martindale, Kentucky Fried Commie, Elio Without the E, Jack Bushel, Field Commissar, Jen, Jen, Sydney Steckle, Tarp O, Big Titty Goth Girl, Mothman, Timothy Pajorni, Trip. Phoebe, Olivia, Harper, Charlie in the Closet, Jen and Poor, Tardis in Paris, Elizabeth Cox, Zoe Shepard, Finn Ross, Alfredo, Avery Darling, Philippa Smith, I make Devon say this out loud, Al Irwin, Wolfie, Rail Leal, Wick, David Wickramaratna, Richard Drum, James Knapman, Lucy Keeley, Millie, Craig Fingersuck, Josh Simmons, Bon Le Bon, Robbie Morgan, Penny Banks, and Tristram Wolf such a long list of boys um kill james bond is alice abigail and devon our producer is nate Bethay. our podcast art is by maddie lubchansky and our website is by tom allen see ya